Hello everybody and welcome to this macroeconomic video on the Keynesian theory of long run aggregate supply. Now a Keynesian long run aggregate supply curve looks like this. Just like normal on our y-axis we have price, on our x-axis we have output. But our curve looks slightly different to normal. I've divided it up into three sections here. Now in section A our curve is horizontal, in section B our curve is beginning to slope upwards and in section C our curve is vertical, straight up. Now there is a reason for this and this is because Keynesian ec economists believe that in the long run the economy can work below full efficiency. So whereas classic economists believe that in the long run booms cancelled out busts, Keynesian economists believe that busts can be bigger and there can be more of them than booms. So therefore the economy can't work at full efficiency, nothing will cancel itself out. And section A shows this idea of being below full efficiency. Now here, if there is an increase in aggregate demand, that's shown on diagram 1 right at the bottom there, then there is no change in price, only a change in output. So what this means is that because the economy is working below full efficiency, it's very easy for businesses to increase their output without having any extra costs. So it's very easy for businesses to employ already trained and educated workers, which are currently sitting there unemployed. It's easy for them to reopen unused factories and office blocks. It's very easy for them to start operating previously unoperational machinery. And it's very easy for them to do things like reopen mines and get more raw material. So therefore, because all the because all the resources are there, they're just not being used properly. Quantity outputted can increase without the price increasing because it's very easy just to do all those things without there being too much of a cost. So therefore, at in section A, if there is an increase in aggregate demand, there is no change in price, but there will be a change in output. However, as we move into section B, we begin to approach full efficiency. So it does begin to cost firms if they increase their output. So that's shown on diagram two, where aggregate demand is, so where our equilibrium output is in section B, our price has gone up from P1 to P2. And this is because now all of the factories are being used, all of the already trained workers are being used, all of the already operational mines are being used. So now what we need to do is we need to build more mines, we need to build more factories and we need to train and educate and employ more workers in this particular field of production. So therefore that costs money, so therefore our price now increases to P2. However as we move into section C when the economy is working at full efficiency then our price will just go up and up and up and up no matter how much we try to change our quantity. And section C is equal to a classic long run aggregate supply curve. If you were to cut just that little bit off, it's vertical, just like a long run aggregate supply classic curve. And this is because in this section we are at full efficiency. There is no more room to build, in, build any more factories. There is no more metal in the ground worth mining. And there are no more workers. Everybody is employed. So Keynesians believe that the long run aggregate supply curve looks like this. It has three sections. We have below full efficiency, approaching full efficiency and at full efficiency. And in the long run, the economy can work at any one of those points, depending on where aggregate demand is. And the only thing you really need to know is that section C, the at full efficiency section, is exactly the same as the classic long run theory.